we find ourselves sitting at a table with some of the biggest names in poker. I'm here, ponied up a buy-in, and I'm ready to go to battle. And we end up getting it all in versus every single one of these foes. So I ask that you all buckle up, grab yourself some popcorn, grab yourselves a drink, and get ready. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. More than all of that, enjoy the show. Opening things up here, we actually all did today's session kind of on a whim. Things opened up with a fun dinner here with all of us heading out for some sushi when we decided it would be a good idea to go to the Hustler and play a private game. A shorthanded one nonetheless. In the very first hand, things start off quickly where we lose $500 in a bomb pot, which leads us into this first hand of the session. Wesley is on the button and he decides to open it to $75. At this point, we're playing four-handed. The game that we're playing is 5-10. Dave decides to make the call here from the big blind and I'm the $25 straddle and I make the call with king queen offsuit as well. The flop comes out ace 10 7 rainbow. With the action checking over to Wesley, he decides to see bet for a hundred bucks. Dave decides to make the call, and with the pot odds, and considering that we have four clean outs, I decide to peel one off here. And peel one off we do, as it comes a miracle jack of hearts on the turn. This does in fact bring a backdoor flush draw, but we have the stone cold nuts. And I think this is a great spot to spring the trap. I throw it over by checking it over to Wesley, who decides to double barrel for a massive sizing of $500, going the size of the pot. Dave reluctantly decides to fold, and with the action on me, playing about $1,750, it's kind of a weird spot where I think I can just call sometimes, but just in case my opponent has a combo draw and will give up on the river, I decide to go for Gusto. It seems like spring the trap right now makes the most sense, I go all in for 1750 bucks. Wesley enters the tank, and the tank is where he sits for quite some time. He thinks about his options, asks if I'm a pro. Well, I don't know if that's going to help your answer much, Wesley, but he decides to, unfortunately, for him to make the call. We now have a over $4,000 pot heading to the river with the Stone Cold Nuts dealer one time, a clean one. We are blessed with the eight of diamonds on the river. A massive pot to get us in the green immediately is exactly what we needed, baby. Let's go. Well, the one thing I love is getting things started off in a bang. Almost never do I feel like we end up the session immediately up. But here we are not having to fight an uphill battle and looking to capitalize on that. In this next spot, I decide to open the button with ace 10 of diamonds to 30. Mike X in the big blind decides to 3 bet to 125, and I make the call. One thing is, I'm not going to ever be folding here for many reasons. I mean, my hand's really good. And this is the first time I get to play with Mike X, who's also a fan of the vlog. I'm a big fan of Mike X, to be quite honest. I watch him all the time. All of these guys are people that I watch on the Hustler Casino Live. So, honestly, quite the pleasure and the honor to be playing with everyone today. Anyways, we're going off to a flop. And as you guys know, there's no friends at the poker table. And... A little less friendly when the flop comes out 10 7 7. Flopping top pair, top kicker with a backdoor flush draw just in case we were behind. At this point, Mike decides to see bet for 125. I decide to make the call. I feel like raising here is kind of decent sometimes, but anyways, we're going off to a turn card that comes the Queen of Spades. At this point, my opponent checks it over to me, and I think with the current runouts of things, checking back seems fine, so. I go ahead and do just that. The river card comes out the nine of hearts, and our opponent decides to throw out a meaty bet of 400. Well, not my favorite spot in the world, but not my least favorite spot in the world. I think when we check back the turn, we have set ourselves up for a pretty easy call on the river. So I go and just stick it in there. And Mike X shows us the bad news after he rivers a set of nines to equal a boat, which beats one pair. Oh man, that's uh. That's quite the bummer, but we've built ourselves a little bit of a cushion so we can withstand the pain. By this point, we're now playing five-handed after a good friend of mine and a private game regular, Clue, decides to hop in the game. At this point, under the gun, Dave decides to raise to 25. I'm next to act in the cutoff, and I three bet to 125 after I look down at pocket jiggities. The big blind Mike X decides to cold call, and then the under the gun player decides to fold. 
We're going off to a flop here that comes 8-8-5 with two clubs. At this point, I decided to throw out a C-bet for 150. My opponent makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes the Deuce of Spades. Once again, with the action on my opponent, he decides to throw out a lead here for 200. Many things can be had here. My opponent can easily have a hand like 10s and 9s and be doing this for value, or a hand like Ace-3 of Clubs, Ace-4 of Clubs. All of those hands make a ton of sense, but... I think anything besides a call is an overplay, so I make the call, and the river card comes a king of spades. Not my favorite card, as now some flush draws improve the top pair, and even less my favorite card when the big blind decides to bet for 500. Well, I think at this point, my hand is slightly underrep, considering I didn't raise on any streets. That plus, there's still a, a pretty good chance my opponent can be value betting worse. Like I said, 10s or 9s can definitely make sense. And beyond all that, with the flush draw breaking out, I think I've got to look my opponent up. And look my opponent up is what I do when I make the call. I quickly show my hand, and my opponent gives me the nod and lets me know I'm good. So, whether it was a little bit of a cooler there, or my opponent was going for a big bluff with some missed clubs, definitely a solid spot for us there. Things continue to press forward when the button decides to race to 100. The big blind makes a call, and I make the call as well. We're going off to a flop here that comes jack, seven, deuce, two hearts, and a club. Great spot for us as we flop top pair and a good kicker. Nothing to do here besides check and flow. Luckily for us, it ends up checking through. And even better for us when Dentist Dave decides to lead out on the three of spades turn for 125. I think at this point we can call sometimes, but I think that's likely like a good play. But raising here makes a lot of sense as well. I raise it to 300. The button Wesley gets out of the way. And then Dave decides to make the call. Going off to a river card that comes E7 of spades. Not my favorite river card in the world, as obviously Dave can have 8-7, 5-7, 6-7. But when he checks it over to me, I think it gives me the clear green light to go for some value. I go ahead and decide to throw out a bet of 700. Nothing too, too massive. Like, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 80%, 75% seems okay. Dave pretty quickly makes a call. I show down my hand, and he flashes the jack of spades, so... Again, another semi-cooler there for our opponent. Luckily for us, we were able to pick up some extra value there on that river. As once said by one of my poker idols, Antonio Sfandiari, it's hard to make a pair. And let me tell you, it's even harder when you're playing shorthanded, four, five-handed. I mean, anytime you run top pair versus top pair, it's a pretty sick little spot. Things continue to press forward here as the button raises to 75. The big blind calls. I'm in the straddle, and I look down a king nine off. Not a great hand, but decent enough to defend, so I make the call, and the flop comes out, king, four, deuce, rainbow. With the action checked through this time around, the turn card comes the queen of diamonds. At this point, Dentist Dave once again decides to dart a bet for 200, but the thing that's slightly different from the first time around is this is a little bit of a meteor bet, so raising here is probably not the best idea, and I do have kind of a crappy kicker, so... Eh. I just decide to make the call here. The button folds, and we're going off to a river card that is a beautiful nine of hearts. We now improve to two pair, although there is an opportunity for Dave here to have a hand like Jack-10. With the action on him, he bets out 300. Well, a little worrying, but, you know, you can't just live under the bed, scared of the boogeyman. Sometimes you gotta be the boogeyman. I pretty much min click it to 700, looking to get value from inferior hands. Maybe my opponent has a hand like two pair. You know, there's a ton out there. Luckily for us, our opponent makes a call. We show our hand confidently in, until Dave shows a set of fours. Let me give you guys a little bit of a heads up. Me and Dave will continue to trade for the rest of the session as we trade big pot after big pot after big pot, and here is no different. Feels like every single hand of today's session, I'll find myself in the straddle. This one's no different. Mike X decides to complete from the small blind, and then the big blind, Dentist Dave, throws out a min click to 50. Well, I looked down at king six off. Not a great hand. I am in position, and it is a min click, so we're getting a pretty good pot odds here. I throw in the call. Mike X decides to fold. We're going off to a flop here that comes out jack, four, three, with two spades. At this point, Dentist Dave throws out a small C-bet for about a third the size of the pot. Uh, uh, all right, screw it. Let's go for it. I throw in the chip. I throw in the call. King High can be good here sometimes. We're going to have to a turn card that uh, is probably the best card in the deck. It comes to the five of clubs, improving me to an open-ended straight draw. At this point, my opponent checks to me, and I think 
if we got to go for it now, right? Going the size of the pot here pretty much at this point, I bet 200 pretty quickly. Dave makes a call, and we're going out to River Card looking to improve and improve we do as it comes a deuce of spades. Well, the front door flush does complete, but I think that Dave would consider double barreling with the hand like that. And even more so when my opponent checks it over to me, I think we have a clear green light to go for max value. I decide to bomb this river for 600. We do it with bluffs. You got to do it with some marginal value like this. My opponent goes deep, deep into the tank before eventually saying that he has a straight. Oh, and then it hits me. Oh my God, an ace makes a straight. I can actually get called by a worse straight. After even more tanking, Dave inevitably realizes that his hand's too good to ever fold here. That'd be giving me way too much credit. He makes a call, but unfortunately this time around, he was correct in his gut feeling. His initial feeling was right. I did have the best of it. He shows ace jack, so he was absolutely putting me on a line like the fish I am and reeling me in. Too bad he forgot that this fish is actually a whale, and I sprung loose and got out of there, baby. Let's go. In a game like this, you've got to give a ton of action. You can't just knit it up and expect everyone to enjoy themselves. That's just not fair. It's not, it's just not in the honor or in the in the in the intention of the game. The intent is for us to come here, have some fun, be a bunch of the boys, and just you know, go back to the core of poker, which is having fun with all your pals, all your buds. And this next hand is no different. By the way, my VBIP in this game is like over 70%. It's, it's honestly ridiculous. This is a good example of it. We looked down at 9-5 here. From the button, I raced to 100. The big blind and the straddler make the call. We're going off to a flop here that comes out jack, 9, 7 with two hearts. A super wet, super connected board. The action checking over to me, although I definitely like, honestly, a check. I throw out a bet here. I can honestly get called by worse sometimes. Pairing a flush draw, pairing a straight draw, a flush draw or a straight draw. I make 150, half the size of the pot. Mike decides to make the call here as well as Dave. We're going off to a turn card that comes a miracle five of diamonds. What the heck is going on? Some straights do complete, but when the action is checked over to me, we've got a bet big. We've got to charge all these draws. I bet $500. At this point, Mike lets me know that this is his grandmother's or great mother's great great grandmother's favorite hand, something like that. I don't know what that means, but his hand might be pretty good because he's calling some big bets. But the river card puts all of that to rest. It's a nine of diamonds. Oh my god, I'm just sun running today. We make a miracle boat after flopping middle pair here, and it's quite a bit disguised. And even greater yet, Mike. X decides to jam all in for $1,800. The easiest call of my life. I let him know immediately that I do have what is effectively the nuts, and I just throw it over immediately. Mike X flashes a nine, so we absolutely cooler him here. Oh, man, that run out was disgusting. Looks like we might have even needed that turn, but oh, my goodness. What a great spot for us. Unlucky for Mike that he just ran into it here, but... Being on the right side of the cooler, man, it feels really good. I cannot lie. Continuing in the whole spirit of things here, there's a double straddle on to 50. We're getting the blood going here. I decide to raise it to $100. The small blind, the big blind, the straddler all make the call. So does the double straddler. It's a family pot. And don't we all love just that? Except it's not a family pot as Dave decides to click it up to 225 from the double straddle. Well, once again, it's a family pot as everyone calls it 225. There's a thousand dollars in the middle. We're going five ways off to a flop where we flop middle pair. Okay. I mean, it can't be the worst thing in the world. The flop is king, queen, eight. Dennis Dave decides to throw out the old blocker bet for 25 bucks. The action over to me, I'm going to treat this as a check, and if it was a check, I would probably check, but I'm going to just bet because I have a pair, so why the hell not? I throw a bet for 175 Everyone else except for Dave makes the fold, and then Dave calls, so I like that. We're going heads up to a turn card that comes the six of hearts. At this point, Dave throws out one other bet for 25 bucks. I don't love it, but I mean, 25 bucks. what the hell? We got to throw in the call here. Can't raise now. The river card comes out the jack of clubs. Dave once again throws out a bet for $25. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting taken to value town. Or this could be the sickest bluff of all time. But for $25, bucks, sayonara. There's so much money in the middle. I might as well just call here with three high if I had to. I'd throw it in just to see it. 
Dave shows ace high and somehow we win this pot. We faded a ton of equity there on the turn as Dave picked up a nut flush draw. So lucky for us there, we fade a ton of outs on the river and, you know, we get to win a pot. Who doesn't like that? So far, this session has been the session to remember. Everything has gone my way in every single pot. And I mean, how can you complain? Things are just going great. I'm feeling great. The session's great, and the company's the best part of it all. I haven't had this much fun playing poker probably ever. I'm playing with some of my poker idols, some of my friends, and we're just shooting the shit, you know? Excuse my French. This next spot, the button decides to raise to $100. Dave in the small blind decides to 3-bet to 300 and then the action's on to me next to act in the big blind. I look down at ace-queen of diamonds. Well, I've got quite a bit of money in front of me, and Dave has quite a bit of money in front of him, but we're playing five-handed. I've got a premium. I go ahead and throw in the, the old jammer ball. I go all in for $6,000. It folds back to Dave, who ends up making the call, and this is now an 8.2K pot brewing. I say, Dave, can we please run it twice? Dave obliges and shows pocket jacks. Well, we've got a race of all races. The first board comes out with a jack in the window and a queen to follow it. That burns one of my outs. Oh, my God. Turn is a seven. The river gives him a boat. Here we go. Second board comes out with an eight on the window, followed by a queen. Oh, let's go. Oh, we just got to hold one out to fade. The turn is a 10 of diamonds and the river's a six. Oh, I know it was only a chop pot, guys, but that was a big one and I'm happy we chopped it. After fading quite a few outs in that last hand, we have another hand to go over where once again, the $50 double straddle is on. The cutoff opens to 200. You guys know the cutoff. He goes by the name of Suited Superman, one of the nicest people I've honestly met in poker. With the action on me here in the small blind, I look down at pocket eights. Suited Superman is only playing about 2,000 effective, which is good for 40 big blinds, believe it or not. And considering how much money I have in front of me, it feels like, you know, it seems like a good spot to go for it. I go all in for $2,000 effective. Suited Superman makes a call here, and we're going to have to two runouts. The first board comes out 9-7 deuce with two all spades. We do flop ourselves a flush draw. The turn is a six, giving us even more act outs if we were actually behind. And the river card comes a seven of diamonds. We win that first board versus what I assume is ace high. The second board comes out 6-5 jack. Turn is a ten of hearts and the river's a three of diamonds. Our opponent does confirm that we scoop yet another massive pot. $4,000 coming my way. What a day to remember. Yet again, we find another fun hand to go over, and it's actually the last hand of today's session. I raise from the cutoff with ace-9 offsuit to 75. The button and the straddle call. The flop comes out 9-7 deuce. Action checks to me. I throw out a chunky c-bet for two-thirds for 150. Both opponents make the call. Looking for a brick on the turn, and I mean, this is the closest thing you're ever going to get to brick. It comes to four of hearts. Brings a backdoor flush draw, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. The action checked over me once again. I throw out a meaty bet of 550. The button then folds, and then Dave makes the call from the straddle. The river card comes out of seven of diamonds. Similar spot against Dave earlier where the river card paired. And once again on the river card pairing, he decides to check it over to me. Although we can go for big value, I think in this specific spot, a little friendly bet of 250, make it a little milkier, maybe get called off by a slightly weaker hand. And that is what happens as... Eventually, Dave throws in the call. We show and we win. The session of all sessions, the sun run of all sun runs. I don't think we missed a single flop today. I don't think we didn't find a spot to not hold. This was a session to remember with some of the greatest people I've met in poker, hanging around my friends, playing some good old poker and running good. What's not to love? I'm overwhelmed with emotions and I cannot wait to talk to you guys more after the start over me live right now in the parking lot to see how we feel. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. Too, too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. Okay, so that is gonna conclude today's session. We were that was 
an absolute madness show. We played shorthand the entire time. Obviously, some hands weren't premiums, but that was that was hectic. Um, but a massive, massive, massive amount of good news to report. Uh, we ended up playing for like five hours. We just we kept playing. We kept extending the time. We were into the game for 2500 and I was out for 8450 So just shy of a $6,000 win, which is one of the biggest wins of my entire year. It's funny, we, we came in saying that we were only going to play 510 and as you guys saw, the $100 straddle, the $200 straddle. I put on the $200 straddle a lot tonight, so just a huge win for us. Very happy about that. Yeah, what a day. If you guys appreciate it and enjoy these videos, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe down below. If you guys want to see me on the Hustler stream, hopefully that's in the near distant future. Outside of that, I hope you guys have a lovely day. It's Tabby Sunday. More importantly, we're going to get to the tables, y'all. Before I go, every Sunday, lucky lady, you guys can play with me at 1 p.m. Outside of that, you guys can always play with me on the Splash Squash, which is the link in the top of the description, the Telegram. They'll get you all set up if you guys want to play with me. I'm streaming that every Sunday, by the way, where I play with a lot of y'all. We're trying to get this set up on Discord now, so I'm going to build a Discord out so we can all chat and play together. Uh, outside of that, is there anything else I need to mention? I don't think so. Private game's still going on every Tuesday and Thursday, I think. If you guys want to play in those, message me on or DM me on Instagram. Have a great day, folks. That's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. What a great session. Let's go. I'm so outspoken like reason jimmy neutron boy young g's and i'm a self-made man out of sweden and it's still off top i'm tweaking but i still gotta fight my demons i ain't no good i'm evil i ain't been clean since eden it's a war going on outside make you put your hands on your head like the macarena that's why i gotta watch my demeanor.